Hi guys, this is my review of the MacBook Pro 13 Retina and before you're wondering, it is not the mid-2014 model but just the late 2013 model but after all there was just a difference in 200 MHz in terms of CPU and the minimum RAM was raised to 8GB so my model is pretty much up to date after all. So let's test it, let's damn it! Let's talk about the design and the build quality and the first thing I want to talk here about is the build quality itself because the device is made of the aluminum and it feels super premium, looks very elegant, sleek and also very solid. The only thing where it maybe doesn't feel super solid is at the front of the bottom of the device where it slightly, ever so slightly bends when you are picking it up, but that's pretty much it. But otherwise, they have so many little details that make the device feel so nice and really smart, intelligently designed. Starting with the charging port, so when you charge the device and plug in the uh, charger, you will see an orange LED while charging and a green LED when the device is fully charged. This is a small thing but really makes a difference. Another really nice thing is the cutout at the front of the device so we can open it with one hand. And another good thing here is the stiffness of the hinge. Because it is stiff enough so it won't wobble around but it is loose enough so you can open it with one hand. This is also one maybe small thing but it really makes a difference because opening with one, 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 with one hand is something I really prefer to do. One thing about the design that isn't so perfect is the edge on the front before the keyboard because there I scrub a lot against it and using, it, using the keyboard for a longer period of time scratching against it was a bit annoying. If you are a bit higher above the keyboard then don't get along this edge. The problem isn't there but otherwise this is really great and another one really small thing I have to mention is when you close the device this closing sound feels or sounds something like from a luxury car. You really have to hear it because all the other laptops they just close and boom. And this has so a nice comforting sound. Those small things make a difference. The next thing I want to talk about is the keyboard. Because it is a really outstanding keyboard and I would even dare to say it is the best on the Ultrabook market. Maybe the key travel isn't the biggest one and the, the resistance isn't so big but it just feels right for me because the layout and the overall design of the keyboard just worked perfectly for me. I could type so fast and with so few flaws I never saw before and it's just an enjoyable, um, ple a pleasurable experience to type on this keyboard. But like I said, the keyboard is the best thing, but there is one thing that is even better and that is the touchpad because it just doesn't have only a super feedback and a really nice texture because it is made out of glass, I would say, and it's never slippery and never sticky and super sensitive. It is not, I wouldn't say super sensitive, but it has just the right amount of sensitivity so it always recognizes what you do. But the good thing is what it recognizes because the touchpad is so smart. Out of the box, you have so many options, you can set up so many gestures, but if you install an app like Better Gesture Tool, I think, there you can pretty much customize every little inch of this touchpad and make so many things easier. It's like hotkeys but on a touchpad and I find this to be so intuitive and so useful and smart and that's why I'm saying it is the best, by far the best touchpad on every single device and because of the system integration it just works way better than on anything else. So in overall I'm pretty impressed with the design and the hardware and I can't complain about anything at all. The only thing is the edge, which I don't like, but otherwise it's pretty much very, very close to perfect. Okay, so now let's head on to the display. We have a 13.3 inch display with a resolution of 2560 by 6300, which they call Retina. And I have to say it is super sharp, but it's not like there aren't sharper displays out there. But the good thing here about Mac OS is it handles scaling way better. You have two different options, one that is showing you the native resolution then you have three different scaling solutions but those work way better than on any other windows device and i have to say scaling works nice everything is sharp and everything has the correct size nothing is too small or nothing is too big if you don't want to so that's a really nice thing about the brightness the device can get very bright and even in sunny daylight in my room at least here i never had any problem i had to go higher of course but usually in a in a normal lit room i'm at about 40 50% maybe 60 if i just want a brighter level so 
definitely everything great here in terms of the whites i am super happy they are i would say pretty much neutral not too cold not too warm maybe maybe ever 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 so slightly warmer but i would say pretty much perfect because you can look at it for a long time and it's not fatiguing you all fine here about the blacks the blacks maybe are the weakest thing here not saying they are weak they can get pretty deep, but if you're watching a lot of videos with a lot of dark content, you will notice sometimes a little bit of details getting lost. But like I said, this is complaining on a very high level. About the colors, awesome. I can't say anything about them. They are vibrant enough to give you a nice pleasurable experience, but never too saturated so they would feel inaccurate. They look very accurate to me and I would say pretty much what you expect them to be. Perfect balance in terms of vividness and accurateness i would say awesome the viewing angles also as well are totally solid no matter how you look at the device it just f looks right nothing to complain here at all so in overall the display i would say is the best i've seen on any ultrabook so far i've seen the one on the yoga 2 with the higher resolution i've seen a lot of different displays right now but working together with the os this is the best in my opinion i've seen so far in terms of sound as always i will give you a small demo right now So what do I have to say about the sound? The first thing as always, the maximum volume, I find it to be completely satisfying. It is very high if you need to, it's not extremely high, but I never had to go 100%, that's the good thing. As long as I never have to go 100%, I'm fine. Mostly I'm at about 70, 80% and then it's already pretty loud, so nothing to complain here. In terms of tonal balance, you get ever, ever, ever so slightly small amount of bass but that's okay i would say the mids are also fine and the good thing is the overall to um, tonal balance in terms of the treble is very nice because you get a nice stereo effect and the sound doesn't feel too narrow or too shallow it gives a nice overall sound if you are watching youtube videos that's what i'm mostly doing the sound is perfectly fine of course if you want to watch blockmaster movies you won't get the best experience but for all the usual stuff I find the sound to be great in terms of the speaker placement they are at the front on the sides and they are reflecting when on the on the table or something like that but also they will never block by me if I have them on my lap so in terms of the positioning they are good and they really give you a nice surrounding experience so not something like narrowing so in overall the sound also pretty satisfied with it Performance is something that is pretty important for me and here are a lot of bright spots but also a few darker spots here and I want to talk about the darker spots first. The first one is the browsing performance. Don't get me wrong, the browsing performance is good and very solid but sometimes if you are using let's say Safari and you scroll with the touchpad you will see slowdowns from time to time. But the weird thing is I also saw them on the 15 inch model which has the quad core processor. So maybe it's an optimization thing after all. But I mostly use Chrome anywhere, anyways because it's just more capable. And using it with a mouse the performance is great once the page is loaded. Because if the page is still loading you can't just scroll really good because it's still lagging. With a touchpad it sometimes lags a bit but in overall I would say the browsing performance is okay but it could be definitely better otherwise the app performance I had no real issue with any app but also I don't really use a lot of apps here because I use mostly use my video editor my browser maybe iTunes or something like that that's it and those things all were fine in terms of the storage speed this was really impressive because I got read speeds of 730 megabytes per second and 680 megabytes per second in write speeds. And this is even, I would say, I think 70% faster than my desktop PC. So pretty impressive here as well. The Wi-Fi was very strong and also very fast. For my particular case, I got transfer speeds of 35 to maybe 50 megabytes per second. And this is almost 10 megabytes faster than all the other devices I had so far with my AC router. So pretty impressed here as well 
As for gaming, I can't really say too much about the gaming because if you really want the gaming PC or an Ultrabook, this is not the right thing for you, I would say, because there aren't all the great games and I'm really not sure about the gaming performance. I didn't really test any because if I would like to game, I would do it on a Windows machine. It is possible here, I'm pretty much sure, but I, I, I just don't think this is the right device if you are a heavy gamer. The one thing I want to talk about that is really, really awesome here is the video editing. Because we are using an Intel, Intel Iris Graphics 5100 and the Intel Iris is way more performant than the Intel HD 4400 I see on most other devices. Because if you are a heavy video editor, this is the right small portable machine because i use it mostly right now for my default video editing and everything works fine if i use imovie or final cut of course the render um the video editing itself isn't as good and as fast as on my quad core intel what is it uh, intel i 3770t it can't compete with that but for a portal machine and the good thing here is that I love the video editing software here. Final Cut Pro and iMovie really do an easy but still very capable job. So the rendering is also very fast. So if you want to video edit a lot, this could be the right device for you. So in overall, the performance is on a very good, very satisfying, solid level. But things like the slowdowns within app switching and so and in the browser could be a little bit better. But after all, still pretty good. Now let's talk about battery life, noise and the heat and the first thing is always a full charge needs 2 hours. About the battery life itself it's hard for me to tell because I didn't find any app that could tell me how long I've using the device. But so far from what I can tell from my personal experience it was the best battery life so far from all the devices I've tested. It was very solid convincing. The standby drain was almost non-existent and I could use it for office stuff for hours and hours and hours and video watching as well. I would say for video editing, four hours of straight video editing should be no problem. This is what I usually got when the device got low in terms of battery, but that's a pretty good term because video editing is pretty heavy after all. The one thing where the battery gets kills almost too fast is a video hangout. There I had a drain of 1% a minute about. And the device also gets very hot and very warm. And this brings me to my next point, the noise and the heat. Because the one thing where the device gets really warm are, like I mentioned, the hangouts. And there the device gets hot and warm. I don't really know why, but that's pretty much the only thing. Otherwise, the device, 90% of all the times, is practically silent. You hear nothing out of it. If you're doing some slightly heavier stuff, the fans kick in, but ever so subtle and you, I, I never really noticed them. on video, Even on video editing, and that's a really nice thing, they just sometimes start and also very subtle. So heat and noise is very acceptable, but one thing where I don't like the heat so much is on the bottom, because all the heat gets down and since it's all of aluminum and I'm using the device on my legs for typing when I'm doing my blogging or doing anything else with typing, there my legs start to sweat and it gets too warm and sometimes even uncomfortably warm. So I would wish there to the, to the fans kick a bit more in so the device cools a bit down. But otherwise in overall the battery is fantastic. The noise absolutely fantastic. And just the heat is one thing I would like to be a bit more subtle. We've talked a lot about the hardware but what about the software? We are running macOS 10 here. So this is something I would say pretty much completely different to Windows. And if you don't like anything besides Windows or maybe Linux, this maybe isn't the right one for you. But I was open-minded, I started it, and I have to agree, I have to admit, it is a pretty nice, easy to learn, convenient, and still quite capable system. It did all I needed it to do. It was very intuitive to learn. And I really like all those multitasking stuff because you can use every app in some kind of full screen mode or in a desktop mode. And switching between those full screen modes is very easy if you configure it right on your mouse or the touchpad. And multitasking there is really awesome then. This is something I really liked a lot. Otherwise we have a lot of really polished apps but honestly I don't really use a lot of apps on my laptop. I use a video editor, a video player, maybe the browser and a few couple of small stuff, but if you need a lot of apps, they are there overall. Otherwise, the performance of the system is very good in overall. Switching between full screen apps sometimes, so the multitasking, 
you will notice a, a smaller bit of slowdowns, but that's pretty much it. There are a few annoying things though. The first thing to mention is the mouse sensitivity. Right out of the box the scrolling is very weird because if you scroll very slow it almost doesn't scroll at all and if you have to scroll with a normal mouse speed you have to scroll pretty fast. This is something you have to get used to. The other thing I think is more of a personal thing of mine or personal issue but I had a lot of trouble accessing my network storage. Usually on all my tablets, on all my phones, on all the other Ultrabooks, I never had this issue. But on Mac OS X, if I want to access my, my server, I see the server, I see all the folders within. But when I double click on folder, sometimes I see the content and can access it. But I would say 80% of all the time, I don't see the content and I can't access it. Sometimes it comes within a few minutes which isn't accessible at all and sometimes the finder just hangs completely and I can't access it until I maybe restart it. So accessing the server for me somehow was a big annoying issue but otherwise in overall the system was very nice. I really like to use macOS and all the apps that are there are really nice to have so in overall definitely a thumbs up. Okay now I want to give you a quick recap and this time it will be really quick. So what about the device? First of all build quality best in class. Keyboard pretty much the best in class. The touchpad is in my opinion by far the very best in class. The display also best in class. Performance I would say is good, good to very good, but not always. If you're doing video editing and so, due to the Intel Iris 5500 there is nothing complaining. Very solid, very high performance. Within the browser, Windows devices sometimes are faster, especially using Internet Explorer, but still very satisfying. In terms of battery life, very awesome, pretty much top notch with everything else on par. The noise is the best I've seen so far because other devices were subtle and pleasant, but this one was almost silent all the time and this is a really good thing. One device where it's pretty weak though is the, the heat because it is also the, heat, the hottest device I've ever used so far, especially on the bottom. It is quite hard to use and this is definitely a weakness in terms of software. I'm still convinced it is a really great system. I have to see, maybe I will check it on my projector, how good it is as a desktop system. But on a laptop with an Ultrabook with a touchpad and the mouse, it works very great. So it's time to come to the end and answer my final two questions. Would I recommend this device and would I buy it? Would I recommend it? Most definitely yes. If you want to do a lot of video editing and you need a quite powerful Ultrabook with best of the bags attributes and everything. So I mean display, sound and all the other stuff. This is the device for you. And if you say maybe the device is very expensive, I have to say one thing. Check the competition and I did this. And all the others, they don't give you anything better for the price. Okay, you get maybe an i7. But therefore you get here the Intel Iris 5100 that makes up for even more, I would say. Because the difference between the i5 and i7 doesn't compensate for the graphics this one has. So don't see this as the overpriced device. It is very expensive, I have to agree. But it is worth every penny because you will notice every cent you put on it, you will get it back in terms of quality and overall experience. And this leads me to my second question, would I buy it? And yes, I would buy it and I'm also giving it the highest rating of all Ultrabooks I've given it so far. But the reason is not because I bought it, it gets the highest recommendation. The reason is I bought it because of this high rating. The device in overall is just so close to perfect. And the only two things I maybe have to complain about is the hard edge in front of the keyboard I don't like so much and the pretty big heat dissipation it gets. And maybe the performance it could be sometimes a bit better, but in overall the package just is close to perfect. And now maybe you could have a question for me and you could say, Damir, you always complain about everything and so much and you didn't complain close to as much on this device. And I have to say I agree, but the reason I didn't complain so much here because the device just is so good. It, it's just as it is. Everything they did they did pretty much perfectly, close to perfect, if not perfect. And that's, again, why I'm giving it my highest recommendation for now on any Ultrabook so far. Okay, this was my review of the MacBook Pro 13 Retina. If you liked the review, please give me a thumbs up. If anything else is there, please leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel. And if you didn't like the review, do whatever you have to do. Okay, bye.